Hi, this is Linda with Waterly Wishes and today I have a birthday card for you using the Simon Says Stamp One Cool Pineapple Stamp Set that came in one of their kits. Now, I've left a bit of a mistake in here. I stamped it down before taking the mask off the stamp. It's really easy to do. I almost do it again in just in a second. But uh, I'm, I've already stamped and coloured these images and I'm just showing you exactly what I did to get the images that I did. I used a Copic Safe marker. This happens to be an EK Success pen. And I extended the leaves from the pineapple in so it looked more like a plant. And I extended the cactus down and then I put little bits of dirt off both of them to make them look like they were coming out of the ground and once you've got it all colored in even if your lines up aren't perfect you can't really notice it so no one's gonna look at it and go oh my god they drew that in so altering your stamps is something you should definitely give a go because it extends what you can do with your stamp sets and the reason I chose to do this is because there were so many lovely designs using this stamp set by the time I got it I didn't want to do anything the same as one of the other wonderful card makers out there so I tried to change it up a bit and I changed the stance a little bit with a bit of masking. Now, I've sort of set out where I wanted everything to go and then I've masked off the top portion because I'm going to ink blend with some with some distress inks, not oxides, I'm using the inks. Um, I'm using the inks for the bottom and I didn't know whether I was going to need the antique linen or not but I ended up not using it. The inks I did use were Vintage Photo and Tea Dye, Tea Dye being the lighter one and I was just checking them against the the Copic coloured dirt on the stamped images. Now this is by no means a perfect blend and it doesn't have to be. Most of it's going to be covered up and the fact that it's dirt, dirt is sort of gritty and messy and you know, so I wasn't really worried about getting a perfect blend. You want some light bits, you want some dark bits. And once you've got everything in place, it actually gives the dirt a lot more depth and character. You'll see in a minute once I've done the top and start putting everything together. Now, for the sky, I am using the Distress Oxides. And I'm using some finger daubers because I want to get a lot of colours in there and it's just easier to do with the littler sponges. So I'm using, uh, I know that one's picked raspberry. The wonder for that, the yellow is wild honey. It's a sort of a very warm yellow. And I'm going over it with the picked raspberry to give like an orangey tone. The idea is to make this almost completely night, just the end of sunset. So you're going to get those orangey, pinky, purples at the bottom and you're going to get those deep blues to blacks up the top. And I'm actually going to add some splatter and some stars and even a meteorite at the end so 
so I've got I'm not sure which one that one that is hang on I'll just grab it and have a look okay now that I stopped recording and came back I had a quick look in my stash and it is seedless preserves and blueprint sketch and then I used the black soot up the top and I extended the blue up there so that it just blended in better because I want it to sort of look like it's it's sort of going into night time so that deep blue really sells it now I'm just going over everything again and then pulling the post-it note tape up tidying my desk up a tiny bit oh and you'll notice the camera is very different and there is a time code up in the left hand corner that's upside down that's because I have to spin my footage around um, regardless of what camera I'm using and this is a little sports camera because I still haven't got my my Canon camera back from Canon it, I haven't even heard back from them yet and it's been it's been nearly four weeks so still waiting on that okay now I used my memento marker to trace around the outside and you always want to do that from the back of the colored image because otherwise you're going to have tears you're going to get a big black mark right through your coloring and it's not pretty now I'm using the Copic marker that I used to color in the bottom of the stamped images and just grounding them a bit into that piece and now I'm sticking the images to each other and some of them in the back and I'm going to pop some of them up on some uh, some thin foam, foam tape um, I got mine from Amazon I can no longer get it from there but um, I've heard the Simon Says Stamp uh, Big Mama Foam Roll is sort of very very similar to what I've got so I had a lot of difficulty with foam tape it was just one of those crafting moments when nothing quite wants to work exactly right for you but I got there in the end in the background there's um something that my camera didn't get me doing and I did splatter some white acrylic paint on the background I sort of did a simple mask on the bottom and did some flecks of white paint and then I used my Versamark pen to dot around randomly and I put some sparkly silver embossing powder over that and heat set it so it looks like there's twinkly stars in the sky I use that same embossing pen to create a meteorite or a shooting star later and the same embossing powder to uh, stamp out and heat emboss the sentiment that sentiment reads make a wish and that's out of an old hero arts um, card kit and the sentiment I use inside the card is from a free birthday gift that Simon was giving away um, and the stamp set is a little mini stamp set called Paparoni. The images I used on the card were coloured in using some alcohol markers, some Copics and some uh, generic 
touch new ones that I bought a whole heap of. They're rather cheap and they're not as good as Copics, but they're still pretty decent. So if you can't afford Copics and you want some alcohol markers, there are lots of choices out there and you don't have to go with Copics. The other markers work nearly just as good. They, I mean, let's be honest, they're not as good, but they're pretty decent. So you should definitely try them if you're on a budget. Now, I just shaded the plants a little bit darker where all the leaves sort of bunch up towards the bottom and that gave it a bit of dimension. As you can see I'm just checking out uh, what colour cardstock to mat my card with because I don't plan my cards I just fly by the seat of my pants. And uh, I prefer to craft that way. I just pick out a stamp set and have a very vague idea of what I'm going to do and just do it. I understand that not everyone else can craft like that and it's probably not the best or ideal way to do it but I find that not having a plan allows me to just roll with the punches. If something goes wrong, well then I can just fix it and move on. Now I've cut the mat out at a two size and I'm taking an eighth of an inch off each side of the the created panel and I use a smaller trimmer to get the bottom bit because it's just a little bit too close to the images. The black cardstock I used is a Simon cardstock. The images and the panel I colored with the inks is Nina 80 pound and my card base is Nina 110 pound. Okay, so now you've gotten this far, I'm going to tell you that I didn't get the last bit of footage for this card but I will talk you through it. So while I'm pasting these panels onto or this panel onto the mat and the mat onto the card base I'll give a quick run through of what I do. I get the Versamark pen and I make a little tiny cir circle and I flick out from that and then I get the Silver Sparkle Embossing Powder from Hero Arts which I'm also going to use on the sentiment and I've used to make glittery stars in the background and I put that heat embossing powder over the Vosemark pen and I get my reverse tweezers and use the pointed end to get any areas that I don't want and I sort of run streaks through it and then after I've heat embossed it, I actually run streaks through it again. And I did get into the white of the paper a little bit. And what I did to rectify that was use a silver Wink of Stella pen. So it all sparkled just in differing amounts. Now, here I am stamping the sentiment Make a Wish which is why I put the shooting star or meteorite in and that is uh, using the same em embossing powder, the sparkling silver from Hero Arts. Trimming that down to put on the card and it's about here where I decide that I'm going to put the shooting star in. And it probably would have been okay without the shooting star, but I just wanted to do extra sparkly. So on the inside of the card, I am using a stamp set from the Simon Says Stamp Pepperoni stamp set. 
and it says it's your birthday so the whole card reads make a wish it's your birthday and I'm stamping that in hickory smoke distress oxide ink for some reason I just didn't want to stamp it in black so hopefully the next time I create a video with this camera there will be no timestamp because I've already set the camera so that it doesn't do that anymore I'm going to try and narrow the focus and see how that goes because um, it's got three settings wide medium and narrow so I'm going to try that and that's all I can do until I get my camera back from Canon so here I'm about to use the embossing pen and it's halfway through this just after I grab my reverse tweezers that the video cuts out and there is not any there is not a plethora of photos to go with this card because I'm taking photos with my tablet which isn't a very good one but it gives you an idea of what the card looks like and this sort of gives you a small idea on exactly how I got this shooting star meteorite effect and uh, a sharp tool like these or those pokey tools you can get are very good for cleaning up embossing powder when there's little stray bits so there's the image the only image I took of this card if you liked it despite the bad video footage hit that like button I'd love it if you subscribed I'll see you in the next one and don't forget, have fun crafting your imagination. Bye.